Okay, this video is directed towards schools and anyone who works in them, administrators, teachers, department heads, um, and the, the title of it is obviously is how to effectively teach math remotely. So I want to say right up front um, that I am a math teacher, uh, taught middle school math, high school math, uh, classroom teacher, certified have a degree in math, master's degree. So I'm a, a, a professional just like you are. Um, but I have uh, been involved with uh, teaching uh, math remotely, online, independent learning for almost 15 years. So my program is Tablet Class Math and um, been using technology, really been involved with uh, all the different trends over the last decade plus in distance learning, etc. So I want to pass on uh, some main ideas as you go through this huge adjustment where you have your students, you know, basically working from home. But I want to say right up front that I'm just sharing with you ideas that you may already know. I'm certainly by no means the end-all be-all expert. However, I do have a lot of experience uh, in this area and I want to share some main ideas with you that I would stress at this time. Um, again, uh, from my experience, we've supported public schools, charter schools, uh, a lot with uh, um, homeschoolers, people who have to test prep, um, for particular exams, etc. So my focus has always uh, been to develop a high quality uh, independent learning program, easy to use for the student that's um, and delivers the same level of education that as they would get in a classroom. Okay, comparable. Okay, and this is something I really want to stress here as I go through uh, through main points. But I'm going to leave you um, some information at the end of this video. But uh, our site is tabletclass.com or tcmathacademy.com. If you have any uh, questions uh, directed towards me, I'll be happy to help you in any way I can. All right, let's get to three main ideas that you're probably already thinking about. But let me go ahead and just um, uh, share them with you anyways. So the first thing is not uh, one size fits all, okay? Don't look for a one size fit all solution. So uh, a teacher, you know, that's doing AP Calc or, or AP Statistics, their solution is going to be completely different to ninth grade Algebra 1. Okay, or uh, eighth grade pre-algebra. Of course, you already know that. Uh, that oh yes, the way you're going to approach this is going to be different than this. The reason why I I, I say not a one size fits all. It's easy to get caught up in um, you know programs out there that say hey we can teach all your students you can kind of use our one program and you know everyone's going to kind of learn in the same way. Well. I would strongly advise not to do that, okay, because a lot of these advanced classes, um, and it's going to bring me to one of the other points I'm going to talk about, you know, your students are completely different. They're going to learn in all kinds of different ways, and you want to take advantage of those those uh, uh, methods and um, kind of procedures that you can use to teach to teach things seamlessly for that particular group so hopefully like department heads and administrations you know you're going to allow your teachers um, to you know you know get together come up with good ideas and teach their individual groups differently and I'll also suggest too that uh, let's say you're a high school and you know there's four or five teachers teaching algebra one I wouldn't uh, you I would give your individual teachers latitude, okay? So they know their students the best. Give them some latitudes, but amongst your groups, you should have some commonality uh, as well. So you're going to have to get together as a team and kind of figure this out. But allow for flexibility because you're going to definitely need it, and you just don't want to have that one-size-fits-all approach or attitude or mentality like, okay, we're just going to uh, do everything this way. We're going to type out our lesson plans, email them out, or post them on a website and hope for the best. Um, you are actually, during this time, there is a lot of great programs and ways that you can you can create a mosaic of solutions, customized solutions. Of course, it's going to take some time to organize and get going, but if you have the idea that you want to create um, uh, kind of customized solutions for your individual classes and levels, you're going to get the best outcomes for sure. Okay, second main idea, focus on quality uh, video-based programs. We'll put an M in there. So there's a lot of programs out there that 
say yes we can uh you know you can all your students can, can come in here you know they can log in you can get like all kinds of nice metrics and reports and quizzes and all kinds of good stuff like that and you can kind of measure what's going on with nice graphs and all that good stuff guess what the main thing that you want to be focusing on is the quality of the video instruction this is a nice management tool but who's teaching the videos okay you got to focus on the videos who is teaching it and how much instruction is is there okay this is something I've worked on for years and years and years so for example like um, I would say like my algebra 2 course that's t it took me two to three years to develop the amount of instruction there because I wanted to make it the most high high quality amount of videos it is a huge uh, undertaking if you're going to try to develop a system that is very comparable to what a student gets. So let's just take for example, um, I'll just use an Algebra 1 um, kind of lesson. Let's say the quadratic formula. Okay. Now of course you can get a quick little you know video lesson. Look a video, maybe it's 10 minutes. You're lucky to even get that. And it's a quick lesson, explains what it is, and here's a one or two examples. That's not nearly enough what a teacher would do to actually teach to teach this topic. Quadratic formula, let's say a teacher would, would spend a day or two or three in your high school or, or middle school. Um, let's say if it's a eighth grade algebra one course, like an honors type of program. So you're talking for this particular topic, you would want to have a lesson that's comparable to what a teacher is going to teach. Which, which is going to be what? Let's say you know, one hour, maybe it's 20 minutes of direct instruction. And then you got a guided practice, right? Teacher's going to go up and do do some problems. Here's how you let's do a variety of problems, etc. And then you got like homework uh, review. Okay, so the teacher's going to do some videos that, or do some uh, answer questions about the homework, etc. So there's a lot of demonstrated uh, practice. Students are not going to get it by a quick tutorial. Okay, and in, in terms of does a person know how to teach does a person actually know how to speak to young people okay you got to have that kind of personality and that communication skill know who your audience is all right so um, this comes from experience that's why you know great teachers you know are are, are so important in our society you own, the only way you're going to become a great teacher um, in my opinion is you're going to you need the experience you can have a knack for it and you can know this material well but the biggest uh, role of a teacher is their communication ability. Okay, can you communicate abstract concepts in a way that students like and understand? So, extremely important. Just don't get dazzled or uh, like, wow, this is a program that you know we can just use and it will handle everything for us. I mean, if you do what you obviously have to do in order to manage your your situation, but really, if you can, um, focus on the quality of the video and instruction and have your teachers evaluate them okay let them say hey are they comfortable uh, doing you know um, you know uh, with this particular video instruction for their students so for example in in, in our tablet class math system we used to have uh, we, we did a great job with like a flip classroom all this kind of different concepts where a teacher would use like let's say a smart board um, here's all your students in the class okay here, let's just kind of draw them out in their desk. The video um, projection is teaching, and it's teaching, let's say, this quadratic formula lesson, and all the students are learning from the video. Now that frees up the teacher to kind of go do some, you know, work with this one particular student individually. Well, you can kind of do the same thing to a degree online, okay? But you've got to be able to have high quality video instruction that matches what the teacher's um, going to be doing. So just don't go with the biggest and names out there uh, I wouldn't would strongly suggest evaluate your options especially if you're going to be you know make any kind of longer term commitments to a particular program all right so let's kind of get to the last main idea and of course there's other things here but these are some big picture things that um, you know really want to you know put out there to get your 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 mindset you know uh, right at least this is how I would approach it and uh, teachers, you need to really take differentiation to a whole nother level. Okay, so of course, teachers, we already differentiate because we have different, you know, people in our classroom that have different needs. But now is a time to where I think 
that concept is going to pay big dividends because let's take a classroom, let's use our Algebra 1 class, let's say it's 20 students, break them up maybe in four groups, A, B, C, and D, and now you, you know, you're kind of taking like the 80-20 principle. Each one of these groups, you know, you can maybe give them different guidance on, on how to uh, handle the course material, right? So group A, these are your star students, you know, you know, uh, just, you know, math's their thing, they love math. These are kind of the self-learners, okay? So you as a teacher don't want to be given individual focus to your groups, you know, um, in the same proportion, okay? So, you know, for right now, you only have a limited amount of time yourself. So let these star folks give them direction, give them, you know, hey, let them kind of do their thing and let them kind of, you know, uh, learn on their own. So with, with a good, you know, uh, supplemental program or maybe with your material, you know, let them do it and maybe check in with them maybe once a week or so. Uh, maybe groups B and C are kind of more your average students. Maybe you're checking in with them every, every two days or whatever the case is, two to three days. I'm just kind of throwing some numbers out here, but let's say this is your weakest group, group D. This is the people that you got to like really watch day to day, right? So you have to really use the concepts of, of differentiation to maximize your um, where you're putting your resources as a teacher and as a school. Uh, you know, principle to keep in mind, 80-20 rule, right? So 20% of your students are going to really require 80% of the focus so they don't fall behind okay but figure out um, you know uh, in your classes try to identify but the teacher knows the best the teacher has a good sense of, of um, you know who to kind of put into this group and you can shift people around accordingly but you need I would strongly suggest uh, teachers if your school can do it to get some sort of supplemental uh, video program uh, to, to help you out okay so be on the look for that. You need kind of a teammate uh, in this, uh, in this, in, in these times. But I can tell you right now, I've been doing this for a long, long time. Effectively work with public schools, charter schools, homeschoolers, independent learners. This is what I do. Never have I thought that that we would be in such a situation um, as we are uh, with this uh, this virus. However, I will say this: I've seen these models work extremely successfully. Okay, I'm very proud of uh, the things that I've been a part of, and it's been a, the result of a lot, hard, a lot of hard work and experimentation, and not uh, you know being willing to be flexible and improve. So, you know, general advice out there. Hopefully, you've already thought of this, but you know, if you hear it from me, it's just another person maybe to kind of say, "Yep, that's what we're focusing on," or maybe I'm giving you some ideas to to to, to think uh, differently about how you're going to organize your uh, game plan, but. Let me go ahead and wrap this video up. If I could help you in any way, okay? Uh, of course, you can leave comments uh, in this video. I appreciate that. But best way to uh, reach me, um, the founder of Tablet Class Math, is to go to tabletclass.com, okay? And I'll leave the link in the description of this video to, to, reach, to reach our site, or TC Math Academy, tcmathacademy.com, okay? So either one of those URLs, will get you to our main site. You can kind of check out what we do. And then there's a contact form. If you have any questions, we'll try to get back to you um, as soon as possible. Of course, this is a busy, uh, extra busy time for us, but we want to help. Um, now, I'll just leave you with one last quick thing. Our focus is on middle and high school uh, math primarily. Um, we do a lot with test prep and homeschooling, but we've been in this for many years successfully and we can help you okay so if you got questions you can uh, reach us through the contact form on our website but i want to wish you all the best stay positive as you make these adjustments and employ this kind of technology where um, the one thing that we have to be all grateful for is that we have so like great uh, technology to be able to use so it's an amazing time this is 20, 30 years ago, it would be much, much more difficult for sure. So I wish you all the best. Stay safe and uh, thank you for your time. Have a great day.